Hey guys, Jeremy here from Environmentarian. I'm in Sydney today and I'm going to make a little video about hemp, hemp straw, the hemp processing and then how it gets to the hempcrete process. So basically from seed to hempcrete and quite a lot of that stuff in between. So let's get started. It's a insulation, it's fireproof, it's bug proof, it turns to stone. So these are just some of the elements of hempcrete. So here I have some hemp straw, it's called. So this stuff gets harvested and turned into bales and sent to the processing unit. So this straw, we can see here, it's got the fiber on the outside and inside has the woody herd part. So those are the two different elements of the hemp stalk plant. Uh, this fiber here can get spun into all different kinds of materials and fabrics, clothes, bags, shoes, all different kinds of things. And then this herd is what gets used for the hempcrete and the building product. Here we have a regular field. Anywhere in the world potentially, but we're talking about Australian conditions at the moment. So in this field, we plant the hemp seeds. So the hemp seeds are planted along here fairly tightly. Now hemp doesn't need much water and it does grow in a wide range of soil conditions. I'm not gonna to get too focused on that at the moment. We're gonna talk more a little bit about how the hemp grows. So as the hemp grows, it actually grows really close together. So as you can see, really tightly formed. There's very little space in between. What that means is that limited amount of light from the sun starts to come into the uh, ground here. So the taller hemp gets, the less herbicides it needs. Now there's a bunch of different hemp strains for different uses. Some are used for seeds, some are used for building products, fiber, some for both. So it's a, almost a nose to tail product. You can start all the way from the nose, which is the flowers or in cannabis terms, some may say bud. Inside the bud is a whole bunch of seeds inside these flowers. So much so, they're so tightly packed, they almost look like little corn cobs. Uh, these stalks can get really tall. Like I'm talking 15 meters tall, but that's a little bit crazy. We're just gonna go for something about 1.8, two meters tall generally for our hemp production. And so all these buds here get processed for the hemp seed. Now the hemp seed has an amazing amount of uses, but we're not gonna get that into that today. What we're here to talk about is the straw. So here we're gonna zoom in to the hemp stalk. So this is a section of hemp stalk. So as we just saw, we have the fibers on the outside like this, and then we've got the herd on the inside. So that's the woody part that makes up the inside of the stalk. So that's the building material that we mix with the lime and make hempcrete out of. So here's the hemp hay. So this is the fiber on the outside and the herd on the inside. That's the building product I'm interested in, but of course the fibers are really useful as well. Here we have the fibers that have been separated from the hemp hay. So this fiber is quite fine and can be spun into all different kinds of materials and then eventually twisted into fabrics, sail, cloth, rope. It, the list is almost endless on what you can do with a hemp fiber. Here's a uh, hemp bag. So here I have the hemp dust. So this dust gets sucked out of the decorticating machine and put off to one side like the other elements. Uh, this dust can be used as a kind of MDF or particle board. You mix it with some natural glues and you compress it and then you've got a lovely natural particle board. So this is the hemp fines. Again, it's a very versatile product. One of the amazing products it's used for is canna wood or hemp wood. So as that says in the name, hemp wood is a wood. So the wood can be used for decking or furniture or the uses are of course endless. Now, what you could also do is compress these into pellets and use it as kitty litter or use it for animal bedding. Uh, so as you can see, there are quite a lot of uses, not just in the building industry, but also in the pet care industry and things like that. So here I have the hemp herd. Now this is the stuff that I'm all about, being a building designer, focusing on sustainable building materials. This herd 
is one of the byproducts of the hemp seed industry. So this byproduct can get turned into walls, into buildings, into sustainable housing. There is so many benefits to using hempcrete in housing, it's very hard to know where to begin. So I'm going to move on and look at our next little sample here, uh, which is the lime. So this is a lime binder. It's called dehydrated lime. It is a natural material. It is one of the parts of the hempcrete process that is maybe less sustainable, less environmentally friendly. But it's all about a balance in life. So here we have the hempcrete binder, or the thing that sticks everything together. So it's, made, it's the dehydrated lime. And I'm just going to read what it says on the bag here. It says, combined with 10 kilograms of certified low THC industrial hemp herd, clean sand and water, produces a durable, high quality, carbon neutral building material suitable for interior and external wall construction. So that gives you a bit more of an idea about what hempcrete is and how versatile it is. Hempcrete is a non-structural material. Concrete is actually non-structural as well. It's the rebar or steel bar inside concrete that makes it strong. So hempcrete is a non-structural material and the way it becomes structural is it's formed up around a wooden frame. So this panel was made by having a plywood panel on one side and a plywood panel on the other side and the hempcrete mix was pushed down to the formwork and tamped down until it forms a nice little glue. It's a little bit like a, a cake or if you think about it with coffee, when the coffee grind comes out you want to tamp it neatly into your puck, not too hard, not too soft. That's the same with hempcrete, it kind of depends on the end product that you want. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about CO2 and carbon sequestration. So as hemp grows in the process of photosynthesis, it sucks in CO2. So the hemp grows like this, fast and hard, and the sun is shining and it's sending down energy. The hemp catches that and it locks it into its stalks. That CO2 is part of the plant. So that hemp is mixed in with the lime and the water to make hempcrete. Hempcrete herd nicely and dampen it, wet it down. The wall is breathable and as it's breathing, it's actually sucking in CO2 into the wall. The lime is trying to get back to be limestone and so it's sucking in the CO2 and it's slowly petrifying. So over the process of five, 10 years, the hempcrete continues to suck in CO2. And over a hundred years, the wall only gets harder and harder with time. So now I'm gonna list off all the different benefits of growing hemp and hempcrete houses. Now it's a long list. So let's start off with the benefits of hempcrete. Now, one of the reasons architects are specifying it is also because of its old resistance. Hempcrete is breathable. It manages the internal air quality, the uh, humidification in a room. And that breathability means it manages the mold. You cannot get mold in hempcrete building. I'll put a link in the description to a beautiful house. Hempcrete is also bug proof. Bugs hate the lime. The lime is a little bit caustic, even to humans. When you're working on it, you should have gloves and other protective equipment. Another amazing element of hempcrete is the sound absorption. So I talked about that before. So if you're building a sound studio, or if you're close to some traffic, if you're close to the highway, if you can build your wall out of hempcrete, then you're absorbing some of that sound before it gets into your house. It's good for your wallet. If you build a structure out of hempcrete, then those insulation factors mean less power thermally controlling the internal spaces. So less heating and cooling, less electricity spent, less fossil fuels burnt. So next up is the fireproof factor. Now in Australia, we've got some big issues with fire. We've had some huge bushfires back in 2019. The hempcrete has a really high bowel rating. So it's fantastic for houses in 
bushfire prone places such as the Blue Mountains, Lithgow, we have a lot of those in Australia. So hemp is actually a cash crop as well. The economic benefits for New South Wales, Tasmania, Australia, in fact around the world, can really be felt in the agricultural industry. Hemp can grow in a lot of different ways, places that uh, re other crops may not be able to grow. It also uh, is a great as a rotational crop because it can draw heavy metals out of the soil. It was actually used after nuclear fallouts to suck heavy metals out of the soil. So it actually rehabilitates soil and makes it better for the next product that you're planting. So for farmers, that is a great benefit for the whole economical viability of their processes. Thanks for watching. If you got this far, you're definitely interested in hempcrete. I've got a couple more videos on YouTube that I'll put some links to in the description and the cards at the end. Um, and hope to see you all later. Ciao. It's not always the case. Sometimes you nail it on the first go and then you do 10 more takes and you're like, we're going to use the first one. <laughs> <laughs>